Hello guys and welcome back to our microeconomic session. Now so far we have since we have started with the imperfect competition we have now reached to a monopolistic competition. In the last session we saw the features of monopolistic competition and what kind of behavior a producer or a seller takes into monopolistic competition. Now as discussed in the last session also that the main aim or the motive behind this entire forms of market is that the seller wants to make a profit. But as we saw in the features of monopolistic competition that there are still fairly large number of sellers in the market. There are producers who produce certain product and have a certain degree of monopoly with it but then it acts like a perfect competition also because substitutes can be produced. The main difference between the monopoly and the monopolistic competition is that in the monopolistic competition substitutes can be produced because there is no such barrier to entry. Right? So we will continue with the same example like for example let's say like, let's take a graphical representation of a seller of let's say iPads right. So iPads is in nature nothing but a tablet computer but then when you say iPad only Apple can produce the iPads correct. I am not saying that only Apple can produce the tablets. Tablets can be produced by n number of other people who produce the electronics gadgets or let's say computers correct but let's take an example of Apple iPads what happens in Apple iPads is although it has the features of similar tablet computers but when you say iPad it can be produced only by one person so he has a certain degree of monopoly with it there are certain consumers who will prefer only those iPads means they have a certain degree of control over their market but this is not in the long run in the long run what is going to happen since their product is gaining demand in the market the other people the other similar type of producers will want to produce similar products which can act as a close substitute if not perfect close substitute so various tablets that you see in the market are nothing but the substitutes of iPads okay let's have a graphical representation of how the demand curve looks like or what is the point where the seller in monopolistic competition can earn a economic profit once again I would like to remind you that the economic profit is different from your accounting profit because in one year let's say your revenue from that year sales is more then the cost of producing that much, that much quantity is. But that is only your accounting profit. What is economic profit is you are also taking into consideration the opportunity cost should you have used these resources in some other business. So if the accounting profit is positive, even if it is the case, you have to focus on economic profit in order to understand whether you are optimally using the resources or not. So we are as a seller more interested in understanding whether the perfect competition or let's say every type of imperfect competition gives us the profit maximization point or not. If it is not profit making, you would rather shut down and leave the market instead of keeping on incurring losses. So whatever profits we talk about are only the economic profits. Okay, let's have a look. For example, let's say we are drawing a single forms demand curve over here. Let's say we are talking about the Apple iPad producer. Okay, we are talking about Apple iPad because we are trying to understand what is the relation like I told you yesterday that the monopoly and the perfect competition these when you mix it or combine it what you come across is the monopolistic competition but rather than monopoly monopolistic is more closer to the perfect competition because there are no barriers to entry substitutes can be produced. So for example, if I say up Apple iPads, so I know that these people have certain monopoly. So whatever my demand curve will look like, for example, this is the price per unit, correct? And this is of course the quantity. So you know that for a monopoly what is going to happen is, 
the demand curve is going to slope from left to right downwards and as told to you we, our marginal curve should have twice the slope of demand curve so let's say let's try to figure it out this is not quite double the slope okay this is okay now this is suppose your MR curve correct okay? so this is your demand curve this is your MR curve now even if you are in monopolistic competition understand that this same applies to a monopoly because right now we are talking about a seller who has a certain control over the product that he sells in the market so then we will draw as usual our MC curve and then we will move towards the AC curve or average total cost curve now you know average total cost curve is a U shaped curve which is at the minimum same as the MC and then it starts increasing correct so at this quantity suppose this is from here we are starting producing so at low quantity the average cost will be what very very steep very very low because very less number of quantities so it is very high and then it comes here and then it will go there this is your AC okay this is your average cost curve now what happens for a profit maximization profit maximization form is that when MR is equal to MC it will try to produce maximum quantities means the corresponding quantity this is my rationalized quantity that I want to produce but when I want to find the price for same quantity I will not come across here but I will go to the demand curve that is the total demand so just let's move upwards and suppose this is the demand and this is the price correct so this entire thing P into Q this entire rectangle red shape rectangle this is my revenue but what is my cost so you are just going to see where this same quantity upwards cut the AC curve so suppose this is the AC curve so this shaded portion right here becomes my economic profit suppose this shaded portion this is my economic profit right so now you imagine a market situation where there are absolutely no barriers to entry and the market is earning profit what is going to happen the other sellers will think oh now this has this market has the opportunity of earning profits and we are the producers we are the ruthless profit maximizer we don't care about anything else than making profits so let's enter this market and you know grab the opportunity but they cannot produce iPads because iPads can only be produced by apples but they can produce another substitute products which have let's say same features or for gaining a competitive advantage like the question that is in front of them is that why would the loyal customers of iPads come and purchase your products for that what they will have to do is they will have to make a product which has a competitive advantage let's say in terms of features or let's say in terms of cost because as we all know apple has this persona of having like the most expensive products and the other competitors like samsung hp lenovo all these people are also producing the tablets are also in the business of producing tablet computers but they have a lower cost as compared to apple ipads correct so now they not only produce this products but since they are in the monopolistic competition and now they want to enter into this market and they want to do what is grab the market share so at that point of time they will also market their products means they will incur high selling cost they will try to do huge advertisement they will try to place good offers they'll try to highlight their features and show that the same features as iPads we are providing but at much lower cost cost correct so these things are the you can say advertisement or publicity stunt that they take in order to market their product correct because they know that these type of products have economic profits once there is a possibility of earning economic profits all the sellers will want to enter the market correct so what happens here is regarding a single seller of iPads 
when you see their cost structure and their revenue structure you come across a fact that what is going on they are earning a certain level of economic profits now other brands like samsung hp lenovo like i said these people will do what try to produce close substitutes they will try to introduce substitute products now when they introduce substitutes products and that too with a competitive edge ultimately what is going to happen is the demand for apple ipads is going to decrease correct so when i say demand is going to decrease at any given point of time what are you going to say that the demand curve will shift to the left so let's see what happens if this is the demand curve and let's say it shifts to the left okay suppose this is my new demand curve correct and again we know that the marginal revenue curve should have twice the slope of a demand curve so let's see the marginal revenue curve twice the slope here is the twice the slope of our original and this is our new marginal so i'll just put d dash and mr dash why is it happening why is it coming to the left because substitutes products are introduced in the market since this is a monopolistic competition and there are no barriers like a monopoly but also the fact that like a perfect competition the products that these people these competitors or these rivals will produce are not perfect substitutes but these are quite close substitutes and with a lower cost will obviously lure away the consumers from apple ipads to these substitute products so the demand at any given point for apple ipads will reduce okay now having formed our new demand and new mr curve let's see what is the profit maximization point here now it is obvious i don't think we need to dwell on the fact that the quantity is going to reduce which quantity are we going to choose the quantity at which mr is equal to mc the mc curve will not change because the cost structure for producing the goods will remain the same so here this is the quantity that they will produce q dash and then again when we go to the demand curve right over here you can see this is your demand curve correct if this is the new price what is the cost as you can see right here the cost is nonetheless the same it is touching right so now what is happening i'll draw it through a red line this is the cost and the blue line is your revenue means there are no economic profits now here there are absolutely no economic profits now why did this happen to apple ipads is because the substitute products were introduced in the market like we saw in the perfect competition that whenever there is a super normal profit the entrants will enter the market wipe off the super normal profit until there is a normal profit means until the economic profits become zero similarly whenever in a monopolistic competition certain seller has a capacity of earning economic profit the others people in the market the competitor suppliers in the market will think that there is a profit earning opportunity so let's also dive into the market and produce substitutes products so these substitutes are not perfect but close substitutes and that is why what will happen the demand for that particular monopoly market or let's say the monopolistic seller will be reduced and then ultimately what will happen is there will be no economic profit for a single seller because everybody will now enjoy their own share of economic profits so from this you can understand that there is a more degree of elasticity means a slight change in price like very slight change they have right the cost or the feature thing that they are marketing 
is not making that much of a difference, right? You also have to see the durability, the clarity, all these things in which Apple has an upper hand, but then cost structure wise, if they reduce like, let's say four or 5,000 rupees, which is technological thing or a gadget thing, it is not that much of a cost, right? So if they reduce, let's say five to 6,000 rupees also even, then also majority of people will shift to that substitute product if they claim to have the same features as Apple iPad, right? So what happens is, the demand curve also shifts, the MR curve also shifts and ultimately the Apple iPad monopolist firm will earn no economic profit. Okay, so this is all about your monopolistic competition. We will once again just, I'll just show you a simple one. Suppose this is just the normal price and the normal quantity that operates in the market. So if the prices of a particular product is reduced, correct? Now when I say a particular product's prices is reduced means I am saying that the substitute products are entering into the market since it is a monopolistic competition, okay? Like Apple iPads were for let's say example, it is for like 80,000 or something and then what happens is a new entrants come into the market and they claim that they can sell it for less than 80,000. So the prices are down. So what will happen? Majority of people will think that if we are getting the same features at a lower cost, why not prefer that? And they will go on doing what? They will go on also telling people, other people, publicity, marketability will increase and what will happen? The share will be like too much. The new entrants will get more share in the market. So this will become what? A flatter demand curve. A flatter demand curve where elasticity is greater than one. Now this entire thing going on here, this elasticity, this degree of elasticity which is more than one is only because of the fact that there are no barriers to entry. Other people can enter whenever they see someone else earning the profits. If it is they don't want to, you know, experiment and if some one or two firms are doing the same thing and they are earning economic profits, then they can come up with the product with a substitute and have a competitive advantage like say that of a price or features also for that matter and the prices are lower, the share will be more proportionate quantity demanded will be more than proportionate change in the price this is why we call the demand curve of a monopolistic competition as a relatively elastic demand curve okay you try the figure once again it might look a little you know fuzzy or it might look a little difficult to comprehend but once you start drawing it's not much of a rocket science first what you have to do is listen carefully first you have to draw a demand curve for any monopolist firm monopolist means he operates under monopolistic competition but he has a certain degree of control over the market stick to the example of apple ipads and then for a monopolist we have learned in the monopoly market that the MR curve you are going to get is twice the slope of your demand curve and accordingly the MC and AC curve you can draw and then with other color pen what you do is when the demand curve shifts to the left you draw two more new curves that is the demand curve and the MR curve and then you can plot the profit maximizing point and you will get these two situations first where there was economic profits when there were no substitutes in the market and second you will get no economic profits when other substitutes were introduced in the market and majority of share was captured by the competitors okay now let's move forward to understanding the another type of imperfect competition and this will be the last imperfect competition that you learn in your syllabus that is the oligopoly. Now as someone now what happens when there is more than one firm but nothing no number as you can say a large means there are a few sellers 
what happens to such a structure what is such structure called that such structure is called as oligopoly where there are more than one more than one or two means you can say from two to ten sellers because where there are two sellers you call this as call it as duopoly correct duopoly the name itself is i think self evident so when you say monopoly there is only one form but when you say duopoly there are two and when you say oligopoly there are few which range from 2 to 10 sellers now this is a very interesting imper imperfect competition because here the profit maximization or the decision making the price making behavior all of this is interdependent for example let's say there are only two sellers in the market that we are taking the example of duopoly x and y now these two people are in the business of producing a similar or let's say identical product right so these two are producing the same thing and then there is always going to be a conflict in the market as to how much market will come under my territory how much will come under your territory and there will be always a conflict regarding the prices if he increase the prices he will think i will also increase the prices so i will get more and more profit these conflicts are like never ending so instead of doing this thing what these people can do is they can collaborate with each other what they can do is they can cooperate with each other and form a cooperative monopoly means these two will come together and at back of the scene at behind the scenes what they will do is operate as two different units but for a market what they will do is they will have x y and company the face will be of monopoly but behind the scenes there will be two units so what happens is there are no conflict of prices they will mutually determine what prices we should sell and they will reap the benefits out of the market correct the market will think that there is only a single seller working and then whatever prices they set they have to abide by it because they have no other substitute products to go to so this way both the firms will earn maximum profit and there will be no conflicts as to what business to do or how to do or how much market share to capture correct so this is called as the cooperative monopoly now that this is not always the case i am not telling you that in duopoly every two sellers in every kind of duopoly there will be a cooperative monopoly but this is the most you can say a general thing that people follow in duopoly market and this is also the most economically advisable way to go on about a duopoly so when you say duopoly there are two people producing the same type of product and if they don't want to get into a war zone regarding the prices or the market share what they can do is collaborate together and put as a face of monopoly in front of market but operate as two individual units behind the scenes and they can reap the economic profits okay coming back to the oligopoly when i say oligopoly i mean the sellers are ranging from 2 to 10 so these are the few number of sellers that operate in a market but obviously we know that these people are also going to have the same motive of profit maximization So what happens actually in oligopoly I'll just give you a brief idea Now when you say oligopoly and there are only a few people operating in the market the price the pricing decision of some firms will affect the entire market Okay like let's take the similar example let's say there are four firms or three firms x y and z So what happens is if this person decreases his prices the consumers for this and this are likely to get attracted to x firm correct so what will happen is these two people will think okay we now also need to 
reduce the prices. Why? Because they don't want to lose their market share. The main aim or the main behavior of oligopolist firm is to not only to maintain their share but also to capture some other's shares. So in this case when X decides to reduce his prices then the consumers of Y and Z will also be more attracted to the excess market. So now the Y and Z have no other option but to lower their prices also because they in fact did not want to do so but because X did so now they are left with no option. So this means that there is an interdependence. The oligopoly that you say have always these firms are what interdependent. There is always an interdependence of firms. Now this interdependence, this interdependence is not, you can say intentional. It is not intentional. They don't want to be dependent on anyone. But the structure of the market and the entire ongoing operations of the market are such that there will be an interdependence of firms. So let's see what this interdependence actually is. Okay. So let's say one firm one and this affects the market means form 2 and form 3. Now prices, let's say the existing prices are rupees 10. Existing prices are rupees 10 and this firm decides to lower the prices to rupees 8. If this firm decides to lower the prices, means lower the prices, more is going to be the demand. So the market prices will also reduce. So market prices will reduce because why they don't other firms do not want to lose their customers because this firm is trying to reduce the prices now note here that since you are a ruthless profit maximizer and if you can afford it at that point if he decreased his price to up to 8 maybe you will do it to 7.5 so that what happens you are not only maintaining your share but you also you are also attracting some of the customers of oligopolist firm 1. So this clash goes on but what happens if this firm decides to rise the prices above the existing market price of rupees 10. If he says okay now I want to earn more profit this rupees 10 is giving me a reasonable profit but I want to earn something called as the super normal profit. I want to gain more money or more, more revenue for that matter. So what he will do is he will charge rupees 12. Now he is charging rupees 10. What will the other firms do? What will happen to the market price? The market, the other firms will increase it. What do you think? Pause the video. Think for a moment. No, definitely not. They will not increase because we know that when the prices are high in the market, the consumers are very reluctant. Their demand will always be lower. So what they do is they do nothing, no change, they remain constant, no increase, no decrease, they remain constant. So then these are rupees 10, they will sell at rupees 10 only which is the existing market price. So they become comparatively cheaper because this firm decided to rise at price of rupees 12 from rupees 10 to rupees 12. So if he decides to rise its prices, these people did nothing, means they are still operating at rupees 10 per unit sale. So they will be relatively cheaper and then they will benefit from this because they are not only maintaining their share, but they will also now be able to capture the share of firm one since their product is relatively expensive. Okay, so this is called as the interdependence of firm. So whenever there is a three marks question for you, how do firm operate in interdependence or why are the oligopolist firm called as interdependent on each other is because of this thing. That whenever one firm decides to decrease its prices, the other firms or the market of oligopoly has no other option but to reduce its own prices or reduce the entire market price because then the consumers will be attracted to a particular one form only, correct? 
but when a particular firm decides to increase its prices the other firms will not change their price structure because then they will become relatively what cheaper and they will try to capture the market share this conflict goes on i am telling you in oligopoly there is always a price conflict until and unless they decide to cooperate together or collaborate together and act as a monopoly in the face of market but you know operate separately until this thing is done then there will always be a price conflict in the market now here also what happens is in oligopoly many a times what happens few firms also come together join hands and they form something called as cartels now the cartel word actually comes from drug mafia really they used to form these cartels and they used to you know keep dividing the territory like say for example the entire khet taluka will come under my distribution and the other taluka will come under your distribution so this word comes from the drug mafia only they used to distribute the territories and they used to operate in that territory as monopoly the consumers from that territory will not be catered by some other seller even if those sellers are selling the same products but those sellers are not supposed to you know sell in this area so in oligopoly also since the price war is so evident some people you know make a pact sign a treaty that they form cartels and then few firms operate in a particular area and they are happy with their own distribution and marketing structure as such and other people will deal with their own cartel correct so this is also a type of behavior in which oligopolist firm works but maximum what you see is for example let's say the highest demand the maximum demand we will denote it by h the maximum demand for market for the product in the market is let's say h so what this oligopolist firm do is they do not cater to the entire h what they do is they sell half of it for example let's say firm a will sell h by 2 half of it why are they doing so because if they cater to the entire demand they will not be in a position to influence the prices and we know that in all these types so far of competition we have studied we know that we are more interested in knowing who decides the prices what happens to the prices how will we make maximum profit so here also same thing happens when you show them that there is a shortage for the particular product people are ready to pay more prices correct for example let's say there is something like petroleum industry it is a example of oligopoly say for example we have this three petrol pumps right over here so when there is no petrol on the first petrol pump you immediately panic you know you think that is the petrol not available in the second or third petrol pump also so you go to the second petrol pump maybe it is not even available there then you are ready to go miles ahead to the reliance petrol pump and you will try to find out if they are catering to your demand or not correct so what happens when you are in need of a particular product and there is a shortage you are ready to pay higher prices correct if suppose there there is a problem with the product the product is not reaching the market and some other seller comes to you and he says maybe i can supply but you will have to pay a bit more you will say it's okay take a bit more but give me the product because i need the product so what firm a does is supply half of the highest demand available in the market and then what will be the after this what will be the highest demand available h by 2 and the firm b will supply half of h2 correct means he will supply h4 correct so this is what happens they try to always keep a shortage in the market so that they can raise the prices so this is the price making behavior of a oligopolist when where in general they are always in conflict with each other but when you see a economic scenario or from an economic point of view what is the behavior of a oligopolist firm 
and this half supply of the highest market demand is generally seen in a oligo uh, in a duopoly firm more often than oligopoly it is seen in duopoly that the suppliers or the firms in a duopoly they tend to supply half of the existing demand so that they can keep a shortage in the market and due to that shortage they, there will be an excess demand there will be more demand and there will be less supply so they are ready to pay more in order to get that product so the oligopolist firm or the supplier can raise their prices okay this is all for oligopoly the main thing that you have to remember is the market structure in which there are few sellers let's say they range from 2 to 10 is termed as the oligopoly the main thing that you have to remember in oligopoly is this that there is a huge level of interdependence because the pricing decision of one firm might affect the pricing decision of the entire oligopoly market with this we are done with the imperfect competition and the theory of perfect competition from next onwards we will have a look at what market equilibrium means what is the market equilibrium and what happens when there is a change in supply and demand so i'll leave you there revise it properly and try to draw these figures of the cost and revenue structure for each and every type of competition remember for economics practice is the only and only only solution okay have a great day thank you